everybody, it's Sarah, and I'm back. Um, I did a video yesterday on um, the 2010 um, Tim Holtz Distress Inks that I got um, in the mail. And I got a comment from somebody saying um, that it was nice, thanks for sharing, but they wish that I had um, shown all of them. Well, I'm not sure what the comment meant because there are 12 Distress Inks, and I did show all 12. Um, the only thing I can think of is at one point in the video I did um, compare sponge sugar and tattered uh, rows together to say, you know, say that at the beginning I was concerned they might look alike and um, I just opened them up like this to show that, you know, they were different. So I don't know if she was talking about me showing the inside of the ink pad. Um, I'm not sure, but I mean... I, I don't know. I mean, I could show you the inside of the ink pad, but I mean, does that help you? Pro probably not. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't really tell what the ink pad, the ink looks like by looking at the pad per se. So, uh, I started. It got me thinking though. So I started thinking. Um, you know, maybe it would be nice if I shared a video where you guys could see what the ink looks like on paper. So that's what I did. I went and pardon my, you know, just sloppy copies here, but, um, you know, I mean, I could have done it nice on, on, a uh, card stock and everything, but I was kind of in a hurry. I've got a lot of projects going, but I did want to share with y'all the colors so you could see what they look like, uh, on paper, you know, because I know if I was buying them, it'd be nice to see them before I bought them. Because my reservation when buying them was, do I really want to invest this much money in something? And if so, uh, hopefully they look different than the distress inks that I already have. You know, a lot of them seemed to me like they were going to be real similar to the ones that are already, you know, out there. Uh, I got to assure you, though, that is not the case. These inks are totally different than the ones that um, are already there. I know a lot of times they kind of look the same. They look similar, you know, on the outside. But... But these inks are a lot different. Um, they are extremely um, bright and vibrant, um, more so than the other ones. Uh, the other ones are kind of, you know, you got a lot of uh, neutral colors and stuff. It seems to me like Tim Holtz is kind of trying to uh, step out now and add to the collection by adding some real vibrant and bright colors. So um, they make beautiful tags. I have some tags that I've, I've uh, made, you know, although my tags aren't beautiful. <laughs> uh, these, are the, I mean, they could be. that They could make beautiful tags. These tags, I, I mean, they're not bad, but I just made them up real quick right before I did this video just so I could give you all an example of uh, what these uh, inks look like uh, when uh, blended together and, and whatnot and put on tags um, to kind of give you an idea. So let me get started so I don't run out of time. Uh, these are the inks that you have, though. Um, first one is Stormy Sky. It's kind of like a, a smoky kind of blue. Uh, sponge Sugar, Soft Pink. Wild Honey. You've got like a goldish orange color. And uh, Bundled Sage, which is this uh, green down at the bottom. Soft green, pale green. Uh, next one you have is Forest Moss. It's right there. It kind of looks more like an olive green than the olive color that I'm, that's coming up. Rusty Hinge is like a brownish orange. Victorian Velvet, nice mauve color. Tumbled Glass. It's kind of like a soft blue, light blue with a kind of maybe a hint of turquoise slightly. Maybe I'm reaching on that one. I don't know. Uh, Chip Sapphire is a deep blue. Uh, see, and on the outside of this package, it looked more purple to me. So, you know, that's... You can't really rely on looking at the package. That was another reason that I decided to put this on paper for y'all. Because, I mean, just showing you this box doesn't really tell you much. Uh, Barn Door, which is a nice red, kind of a light red, cherry red. And Pumice Stone, which is the most neutral color out of the bunch. And it really is a great uh, ink for blending these inks together and bringing them together. And you've got Crushed Olive which is uh, kind of a really bright lime looking green and at first I didn't care for that until I uh, made a tag with it and then I really really started to like it actually I think it might be one of my favorites now even though at first it was not so here are my tags and let me grab my list here I, I wrote down what colors I used in the tags because sometimes they start blending together and it's hard to say uh, first tag this one is uh, I 
uh, stamped it and uh, embossed it with clear embossing so I could use a resist technique on this one. Uh, but the colors that I used for this was, um, the colors were, um, where'd it go? I'm sorry. The colors were Forest Moss, um, Victorian Velvet, Sponge Sugar, so, you know, your Victorian Velvet is kind of the mauve colors on the outside, and the Sponge Sugar is the pink in the middle. Uh, Forest Moss kind of running along the outside, and, um, the lighter green in the center here is the, uh, bundled sage. The black ink at the bottom is just some Stampin' Up! ink that I used to stamp that image. That's a Stampin' Up! stamp. Uh, next one, um, I really like this one. This is just uh, three different inks and this is uh, the green bundled sage, uh, chip sapphire with the blue, and then the pumice stone which I used to kind of blend the colors together and ink around the edges and then I stamped the flourish and the cinnamon cherish uh, on the tag with that pumice stone. Next tag I have is this one's kind of bringing the warm colors, uh, you know, the other ones are kind of lighter, cool colors, and it's kind of brightening it up. Uh, this is um, a lot of colors mixed together, so I won't even try to show you what colors is what. I'll just tell you what's in there. Um, we have uh, Victorian Velvet, well actually you can kind of tell, Victorian Velvet, which is the mauve, Spun Sugar, which is kind of mixed in with it. Uh, rusty Hinge, the oranges you see, and Forest Moss, which is the edges, uh, the green around the edge. Plus the um, Flourish and the Script stamp that I used, I stamped with Forest Moss as well. So, and this stamp, I'm not sure where I got it, it's just one of these stamps I have. Actually, I think I might have got it at Red Lead Paperworks, but I'm not sure. Okay, next one. This is where I really started liking that crushed olive. Uh, see that pretty bright green? I really like that. Uh, this has a lot of colors in it. Um, it's got crushed olive, of course. Uh, Stormy sky, which was that kind of smoky blue. Uh, chipped sapphire, which is that bright blue. Um, tumbled glass, which was the light blue. And pumice stone, which was that kind of grayish, brownish color. And if you notice, um, it's very faint, but there's a little wing of a butterfly there. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. I don't know. But and there's a wing of a butterfly there and there. And then there's some script. You probably can see the script on the lighter parts. That's because I stamped it with the pumice stone. It's real subdued, kind of muted uh, with the with that using that ink in, in the stamp, which is kind of nice. Sometimes you want that effect. You don't want that. Uh, you know, you don't want the stamp to dominate your tag, you know, all you see is this big black stamp on there. Uh, sometimes it's nice to kind of blend it together. That's kind of what I was doing, is just kind of going for it, blending all together, so. Anyway, that's that tag. And this is the last one I have to, to show y'all. Um, this is a bunch of colors mixed together as well. Um, we have Rusty Hinge, which was the brownish orange. Wild Honey, which was the yellow uh, gold color, kind of. Um, we have Barn Door, which was that kind of light cherry red. And um, Pumice Stone, kind of around the edges. Um, that's kind of what you see, that blending, the dark around the edges. Uh, and then I used the uh, Ranger Archival Ink in Jet Black to stamp the uh, stamp on there. And this is a... Uh, butterfly stamp that I got. Um, this one was from Red Lead Paperwork. So anyway, that is, those are my uh, stamps and uh, hopefully that helps you to uh, make a decision whether or not you want to purchase the Distress Inks if you haven't already. And if you have purchased them, then it'll get you excited and ready to uh, get your inks anytime and get, get working on them. Uh, I've had a lot of fun using the ink and as you can tell, <laughs> It's they're great colors, and I definitely recommend um, them to anybody um, who likes to use the distress inks because they are definitely a nice addition to uh, the ones that I already have, and definitely a lot of fun to work with. So anyway, I'm gonna um, do a haul video next and uh, show a sneak peek of a cover of one of the minis I'm working on. So anyway, see y'all in a little bit. <laughs>